<laughs> I'm tired and I've got an appointment in just over an hour. I guess that means I've got to get ready. So you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi hello my name is Lydia and today I'm doing a get ready with me while also discussing the subject of blaming other people. Now this has been a highly requested subject since I put the feeler and recommendation and suggestion out there which was about a month ago. Now when I say blaming other people I don't mean Hannah Baker out of 13 reasons why I don't mean that and what I'm talking about is do bullies, trolls and abusers play some responsibility in how we feel? Do they have a place of blame within the situation? Just to be blunt and get my opinion straight out out there yes i'm not saying they are the ones physically making us kill ourselves or try and kill ourselves or self-harm do their malicious comments play a role in how we feel yes they're there to be malicious and they're knowing that they are causing harm if you are knowingly causing harm and knowingly making someone ill you have a responsibility and you have a place of blame within that group so as you guys know this year got off to a very rocky start I was being harassed, bullied and trolled on a phenomenal scale and I couldn't cope with it and it got to an anniversary of my ex-partner's suicide and the trolling got worse. It was like, oh it didn't happen and then I got some messages with excruciating detail like, oh did you hear the crunch, the bones, did you see the blood and all on triggering messages. So these people are going out of their way knowing that it was going to make me worse. Do they then play a role in the fact that I then made an attempt on my life? Yes, they do and that's exactly how the police saw it when they took me to hospital. As a whole, do I think that it's, do I think it's okay to blame people? Absolutely. If someone plays a role in you making an attempt on your life, they have to take responsibility. Like, yes. Yeah, me as a person yes I tried to kill myself I tried to hang myself yes that was my actions but did I make myself feel that way hell no I do everything with my power to avoid feeling like that and let me taking medication practicing some skills that I have sleeping no matter what my coping skills are it's irrelevant if someone is then maliciously messaging me with the intention of triggering me they play a role in the fact that I then made an attempt in my life people say it's not right to blame people so when I have flashbacks of an incident, that's my fault. It's not the fault of the person who, say, attacked me, raped me, you know. It's not the responsibility of the person who caused the damage. Not blaming other people is categorically... It, it's just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, there's always going to be a responsible person. Like, yes, we are the ones physically self-harming and acting on our suicidal thoughts, but it's those who push us every other year, apart from this year, while I've been dealing with this trauma. I've never made an attempt on my life. That day, I got pushed over the edge to a point where I don't think it would have mattered who was here, what was going on. I was going to kill myself. That was my intention. That was as a consequence of, you know, months and months of harassment. There's no difference between harassment and bullying people. Harassment is just more persistent bullying. It's never okay and it's never right. And I will advocate for that forever because I have a firm belief that while I'm the one who acted on the thoughts, I wouldn't have been pushed to even thinking about it had people not been bullying me. And I have a very simple policy. If you don't like me, don't watch. The whole bullying thing with me, it played a huge role in my suicide attempt. I, it really did. and. The people who was behind that knew the effect they was having on me because it was all public, you know? It, it's not like I hid my phone down my head in. It's not like I hid it from anybody, you know? Everyone knew what was going on and I made it public knowledge. It's my alarm telling me that I need to get start getting ready to go out. Genuinely, back then was... I, I just can't believe it. Like, people think that it's okay to bully people and take no responsibility. Like, hello, if you make someone's life hell, they're gonna think they're living in hell, you know? You, you can't nicely harass someone, you know? You can't nicely bully someone. That whole thing is a little crap. And I know people say, oh, trolling's just part of the internet, you know, you put your life out there. Yeah, I put my life out there. I don't put it out there for people to fucking bully me over or trigger me over. Like, that's just cruel. And anyone who believes that? Seriously? 
If you think that me putting my life out there invites you to give you some kind of permission to, you know, comment on my own choices, like, example here, my medication, a lot of people have felt that they have the authority to comment on whether or not I take certain medications. And when people was commenting on my medication, they was like, oh my god, she's just an addict. Mate, I forget to take my medication more than I remember to. You know, like, this has been my life for so long now that taking medication, yeah, I take it when it helps, you know? I'm not gonna sit and struggle when I know I can take a tablet and take away the feeling, you know? I'm not gonna just sit and struggle when I don't have to, when I don't need, I have to. But you know, I'm not alone in that. And just because I choose to take benzodiazepines does not make me an addict. Yes, they have an addictive factor. So does pregabalin, so does most pain medication, so does tramadol, so does gabapentin, so does pregabalin. <laughs> Pregabalin is the one thing I have flat out refused to take because it actually has been proven, proven here, scientifically proven, that it is more addictive than benzodiazepines. But on the subject of blaming others, <laughs> I was made to feel like crap. I was told, you know, your traumas, not, your, your past experiences aren't valid because they're not as bad as this or they're not that, you know, I had it worse. That doesn't mean my trauma's invalid. Like, yeah, sorry you went through that, but my trauma's still my trauma. It still traumatised me in a way, and to have that invalidated, it's fucking horrible, you know? It's like, no one has the right to do that at all. Is it okay to bully people online? No. I don't care if you don't like what they do at all. I don't, I don't. Like, can I say this? Like, if you don't like someone, you do not have to watch what they do and like their posts or follow them even. Because that was a big thing. People were like, well, she puts her life online, so it's okay for us to bully her. No. If you put a malicious comment on someone's post, you are therefore taking responsibility for how that person feels because hating on people has never led to a positive outcome. Hating on people has never led them to become some... It's never contributed any positive, you know? It's it's always, always, always been a contributing factor to someone's depression or suicide or when people are like, you know, she can't put blame on people. Yes, I can. If you've made a comment that's like, you're an addict, you know, you're not worthy of help, she's just wasting resources, how do you think that's going to make someone feel? And because you said that, that contributed to that person feeling that way. So yes, I do think there is a place where we can blame people. And I think it is perfectly acceptable to place blame on other people. Given, people will disagree with what I say. That's fine. You know, free world. As soon as you make a comment on someone's life, you are therefore contributing to that person. You are adding something to their life, no matter whether it's negative or positive, and you have to take responsibility for that. I will never excuse people for leaving negative comments. Like, if you don't like someone, all you have to do is unfollow or unsubscribe. You know, you don't have to go onto fucking Reddit and start a thread like, this person said this, 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 and this, 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 I don't like this about her, she's lying about this, she can't be on this, this is wrong. Unless you're my psychiatrist, you have no right to comment on my treatment. My channel's a very honest and blunt platform. I don't sugarcoat things, I don't say things that I don't believe, and if I've had a bad experience with something, I'm damn well gonna say. I'm not against therapy, I'm not anti-therapy, it's anyone who doesn't know. I'm actually down a waiting list for trauma therapy, but, um... <laughs> That's completely besides the point. Is there, there's any... Please. There's anything I can say about this subject. Like, I've rambled on for like over half an hour and I'm literally thinking it's like... I think it's 10 seconds of it, but... Oh well. I hope I got my opinion across. And my thoughts across. And kind of explain where I've been. That's me. But yeah. Bye guys.